Welcome, friends, to the latest episode of The Truth Behind Dentistry. Today, we have a very, very special person who I randomly bumped into at the Cloud Dentistry Houston Appreciation Party the other week at SmileCon. Her name is Fanny Mosley. She is the number one professional on our app out of the entire state of Georgia, arguably the entire country. She's a wonderful person. And the way I connected with her brought such a profound experience in my business career that I just had to invite you over today, Fanny, to, to have the world meet you. Okay. <laughs> hey, Darius, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Tell us, tell us about life in Atlanta as a hygienist. Oh, as a hygienist, um, well, I love, you know, doing the, um, being a temp, of course, because mostly I got out of the field of doing full-time with anybody is because once I, once I became a grandmother, I just wanted to be more flexible with my scheduling so that, you know, I can get to my grandbaby because I only got one grandbaby and, um, he lives in, um, North Carolina. So I just want to be able to, you know, just get what, get there what I need to without having to worry about someone. So well, the schedule dictates this and the schedule dictates that. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. I've been doing this for a long time. So I, I, I feel like I'm at a point where I can enjoy my flexibility and I tremendously do. So I don't foresee going back to anybody's office, you know, full time. What is it that, in terms of the perception that the hygienist has about working as a temp versus permanent. Cause that's what we're talking about here, right? Is the independence uh, of being a temp and not being tied down to one specific office long-term if you don't want that to be the case. Uh, yeah. Well, a lot of times when, um, when someone reaches a stage as myself, not even just for being a grandmother, but sometimes you just get tired of the, the politics, I guess, in the office. And then, you know, and if there's so much, they're getting so far away from, patient quality care and more focus on quantity and so and I, and I like you know like having dialogue with patients like like you just like meeting people I love meeting people so when I'm in a chair you know within five minutes we're friends for for a long time from that point so and they but they they take it the offices move so much towards production that you don't, you no longer get that time to, to bond with the patients. And a lot of the patients are starting to feel that now too. A um, mm. lot of, a lot of offices have so many holes in the schedule because the patients don't want to feel like that number, especially if they're paying a lot of money. Um, you know, the insurance is paying a lot of money. They, they just don't want to feel like a number, but anyway, back to myself, I just don't like being caught up in, in that, in the production. Um, then when you needed, you know, some personal time for yourself, there was always like the, the carrot before the horse dangling. Say, so, yeah, you get all, you can get all this time, but when you request it, oh, it's an issue or you have to do it when the doctor says it's okay for his schedule, you know, to take vacation and you got to take vacation when he takes it. And it's just the, the flexibility and freedom is, is definitely leaving the field. And, um, what else is there? Um, and you know, then you just got all the, the drama. Cause then you get some some of the um hygienists that are that especially the newer ones, uh, and they're they're gone whole. They can get that production in and they're, you know, they're they're not they didn't come in the field when when we were about establishing connections. They're they came in on this productivity thing. So you got some of the hygienists, the newer hygienists, they can hang with the but uh, um, vintage, like myself, we we, we don't like that. <laughs> we, we don't. Right, so, I can see that. Oh yeah, we we don't like that, not at all. So now I get to do what I like to do. I'm very well received in the offices. Um, and if I get to office location where they're back to the semantics, then I don't go back to that location. And and a lot of offices are like that. And coincidentally, I have like a long block list <laughs> for those that I don't go back to. Right. Yeah. Cloud, cloud dentistry, uh, as you know, it caters to both temp and permanent. It, it's whatever the office and the professional want to make of it. Uh huh. That's right. With that said, do you do you feel as if the majority of your colleagues feel the same that are around the same season level that you are at? Oh yes, most definitely. Um, but 
as far as some of the um, stigma of, um, as opposed to being independent uh, versus attached to like a, um, almost like an agency, um, so to say, they have, they feel more comfortable dealing with those, the agencies, I guess. And um, especially if they can file like the W2, W9 or whatever. So it's kind of, kind of hard to get them a bridge to being, you know, totally, you know, for themselves, by themselves, you know, because um, I did try a couple of other agencies and I, I still, I still wasn't comfortable like I am now, man. I'm just, you know, I just, I, I'm happy, you know, go lucky every single day that I go to work, you know, and I see these people sometimes they with the other agencies and they're not as happy, but financially, I mean, I guess for that, that whatever the little security they get, I guess that's enough for them to stay, stick with those agencies. I, but me, myself, I'm like, eh, eh, I'm I see. Mm -mm. What do you think it is like top three things about an agency or let's say staffing agency slash recruiter that makes the biggest difference in all this? Okay. Well, they um, um, had the ability to uh, accrue uh, PTO, um, personal time off. So it's like for, I'm not sure how many hours that they work in a, in a, in a location or they accumulate, they also get like another hour a day or so that goes towards the PTO or uh, they can also get, um, I've been hearing, um, um, the, the W-2 is the biggest thing. Um, and now some of the agencies are offering um, liability insurance. Um, and I just saw one the other day offer um, housing. H housing, if they, they need to, uh, if they're uh, certain hours or not hours, certain distance away from their home or whatever, now they're, they're doing housing. So, but again, they the pay that they receive is still about a third less than what you would do if you were, you know, totally independent. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I just rather have my all for myself and, and not let, you know, because the other offices, I'm not sure what the other offices on the other end have to pay for that, but they have to, they get the house, the hygienist. I don't know what they're paying, but to me, cloud industry is just a no brainer for anybody. So I don't know. I don't know what they're doing, but I, I, I love the, um, I see the cloud industry is improving more and more and more. So I'm not even worried in the slightest. I'm speaking with cloud industry. I don't care who's out there. Not doing uh, it. We'd love to hear that. Uh, in terms of, let, let's say, the, the challenging attributes of like staffing agencies and recruiters, the, uh -huh. the, the contract that they put in between to police with, with the office and you. Uh -huh. I would imagine that that would be a little bit challenging for me if I was trying to develop that rapport and relationship with that office. But I got the recruiter or the staffing agency saying, hey, no money talk without us present. Uh, you have a contract. They have, they have a buyout. You got to go through us about all that matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And the, that that man said, well, with, with myself either, because you can find some great locations and, and that you might want to make your home. But because that contract is in place, you have to, you, you can't accept that, that, um, that position. And if you do, there's a buyout, you know, there's a buyout and that um, so much has to come out of the hygienist um, check. And also the office has to pay so much to the agency. So it, it's, you know, it's not a win-win for everybody, only for that, the, the um, agency. Benny, you're you're the number one professional out of over fifty thousand professionals on the cloud industry platform. Uh, the way I I bumped into you for me was a moment in my business career that was uh, very profound. I must say, uh, we were at the Houston User Appreciation Party at SmileCon ADA last week, and I'm floating around saying hi to everybody. I think you were maybe the eleventh or twelfth person that I went up to say hi, and I actually sat down because I, I was about to have my ribeye steak and all the food they were serving. And all of a sudden, you tell me I'm the number one prof in Houston or I mean, in the country, I should say. You're the number one prof in the country. You take out your app. And you showed me your screen, how the number one with the forward slash 50 some thousand came up. I said, my goodness, I just met the number one professional by quick randomness. And 
turned out we, we flew you in from Atlanta, put you on stage that evening, gave you the award for the most productive hygienist on the entire platform by number of, of bookings, was it? I love it. And, you know, you and I had a moment. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> I, I didn't, I was about to cry a river, but I had some tears coming out of me. <laughs> and I just said to myself, my goodness, like, this is just overwhelming. Like what, what cloud dentistry has built here has impacted your life and everybody else's life in such a remarkable way that created this like independence that the, the community needed the entire time. And it was just, it was one of those moments in my life. You know, I, I came back, I flew back. I, I wrote a post on Facebook. I, I, I don't post that often on Facebook. And it was, it was very sentimental, I must say. I don't like doing the stereos. I'm telling you that. I, I won't forget that, that whole experience. I mean, I just can't believe you sat at my table randomly. I, I, I had no clue who you were. I had, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to show my, and I hadn't shown anybody that the whole entire time that I was there, but you look like a, a digenist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought you were a digenist. So I'm like, okay, let me say one thing in case, you know, they didn't know what, what, you know, what they expect. So I had no clue who you were. I was like, oh my goodness, what did I just do? But you're awesome. You you were awesome. I was just going to ask you, were you are you a guy? I think I did ask you if you were a guy. She's like, no. I'm just I'm like, oh. <laughs> I love that. I never heard that term before, guy genus. And, um, yeah. I'm flattered to be termed that. I I think it's my metro side of me that comes out once in a while. <laughs> And we love that. We love that. That's what makes this whole thing so personable because you are personable. Trey is personable. Everybody, everybody is just, it's, it's, it's not about money, money. You know, you guys really take the time to, to ask people how they're doing, like you're doing now. Nobody really asked me how I really feel about this whole thing, but, you know, nobody didn't have to because I know how I feel about it. I just, I just love it. I mean, I just could never believe that I would have went as far as I did and get to Houston. And now talk, I'm, I'm, it's just surreal. I'm, I'm still blown by it. I'm still, I've been gushing with smiles the whole trying for the past week and a half for no reason. I look at my little cloud and I'm like, oh, I'm John, can we like out there? So anyway, you guys are doing a spectacular, spectacular thing. And it, and once people, um, and I know you guys are unfolding more products or, or, or services connected to it. It's, you know, people are not going to have a choice but to just jump in the cloud and just ride it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're constantly innovating. The, yes. the company culture that I, I must say that Trey Tepichin, our CEO, co-founder has built is something remarkable that I, I feel blessed to be a part of. Um, it's one where... We're open to sharing ideas and improving out of uh, self-improvement from feedback from colleagues and what have you. And, you know, fr from the professional standpoint, it's in our mission statement. Part of our mission statement, the main point of it is to empower all the dental professionals out there. So without you guys, none of this would be possible. It's easy to go to the dental office and say, hey, I have an app. That's the first shared gig economy app in dentistry for you to get access to staff in a more reliable, quicker, and less expensive way. That's easy. We sell those all day long. It's finding professionals like yourself that are just amazing people on the platform that are actively using it and what have you that it's hard to find that on an everyday basis. It's coming. It's coming. It, 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 it's definitely coming. It is. I mean, what's, what's, I mean it's still hadn't caught fire yes like it should but it's it's coming it, it is i know it is coming just just keep hanging in there with us <laughs> we're, we're gonna stay because like i can say this is the only pl platform i like to use i tried others you know the one i mean in particular a couple of them have like this little double blind feature that i don't like um where you get an assignment but you don't know the office you're going to and the office doesn't know who's coming to the office until you guys both uh, sign that that contract. And then you find out it's the office that you have put on your block list. And you're like, uh, no. <laughs> so that was it for me. I'm like, no, I don't I don't like the double line. I need to know. I, I already, you know, I, I don't. And incidentally, that did happen to me with one particular agency. 
And it was the very first assignment. And I had said to myself, I said, I hope it's not this company, right? And as soon as the assignment came back, accepted or uh, approved, and I saw it, I immediately canceled. I immediately went on probation with that company because it's like, look, you can't, you can't deny assignment. Once you accept it, you know, you, you deny it. And then, I mean, you deny it or decline it, then you have to go on probation. And I glad, I said, this is what we got to do, double blind. I gladly take it. And they, they tried to beg me to come back, and, you know, and I was like, no, no, thank you, no. No, thank you. And then Sorry, you lost Danny. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's it. Because I have a, I have, I don't know, maybe like good thirty offices that I don't want to have anything to do with. So I'm not going to go there just because of no, I don't, I don't want that at all. And then there's one other agency I went through. They have a list of assignments, and you have to apply for those assignments. But then you have to wait for them to approve, you know, the assignment. Well, you could be passing up other opportunities while you're waiting on, you know, these assignments to come through. And so I, I don't like that one either. And then when they, by the time that they approve the assignment, you, you know, you accept it or, you know, you, you know, anyway. So I didn't like that. Yeah. That was a little much toss in the air and wait. I don't like that. So I think that's the major difference with like the cloud dentistry platform is that there's what we call real time booking. Right. You know, with others, it's like the request goes out, you're waiting for a response. And to the previous point about being able to block any offices that you don't want to see or let them see you. Mm -hmm. Cloud's the only platform I've seen that's capable of doing that. Yes. And that, that's why I never go anywhere else. <laughs> Because I like, I like to have that freedom, you know, to, to do that. You know, I know what I like and I know what I don't like, but what I'm not willing to accept, there's boundaries. And, you know, sometimes people cross those boundaries and I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know. So, and then there's like, I don't know how many offices, one of the days when we do a, um, a query to find out how many dental offices there are in the area or whatever, just so I can... I, I just tell people you have the freedom. You don't have to sit there and keep taking certain things, especially some hygienists. And, and we're talking, they tell me all the things they hate about their job. And I'm like, why are you saying that? <laughs> why are you taking blood pressure medicine? This is why you take an anti, you know. <laughs> 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 Leave it alone. Yep. Tell me, what, how many offices have you in your career worked at? Mostly of the okay. temp, obviously. Oh, you said that is a tip. You named before a temp, prior to a temp? Let's say in total from day one, because right now you're mostly temping by preference. Yeah, right? most by preference. Right. Um, but from day one, since you started and you, you, you grew up in Atlanta doing hygiene, right? Like you didn't travel in any, any other cities to do hygiene? Well, well, yeah, I did. I did. I was like in a uh, um, location from here, maybe about like a two hours from here it was more of um not the suburbs but it wasn't it was a smaller city than atlanta and so i waited until i raised my children and uh then i moved to atlanta because it was you know more diverse opportunities so i just moved to atlanta atlanta as soon as my uh last one graduated from high school i said okay let's go let's go to the city and that's what we did let me ask you this how many offices have you experienced working at in your career Okay, now here we go. So I would have had this prepared if I had thought about it. Um, let me see. When I first got out of school, I, um, let me see, I worked for a location in uh, Dublin, Georgia. And it was, I did that for about three years right before, uh, I did that for yeah, three years and then my boss got sick and he had cancer and then he passed. So we, you know, had to find me another location. Uh, so then um, I worked at another facility. From there, I worked two years at one particular facility. And that particular company, I started off as a part-time hygienist, you know, because that's that's what I needed was that flexibility to be a part-time hygienist. Right. But somehow or another, my, um, this, my schedule kept getting packed with patients that wanted to get on my schedule. So we ended up opening a couple more days to accommodate those those patients. And so um it's at some point I requested time off and uh for six months out I put it in for um to be off. Right. And but they never approved my time to be off. So like 30 days out, 
I still noticed they still hadn't approved my time off and I needed the time off. I gave them six months notice. And so then um, yeah. it was a, a disaster, it turned into a disaster because the the two weeks that I needed time off, they were putting people in the schedule um, for me to see. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I have my, I've got everything set up. We got vacation spots, everything lined up. Itinerary, I can't get out of it. And I'm not going to get out of it. Now, anyway, so it's them I got fired the next day. <laughs> Five offices. I, I know. I got fired from that location. Oh, um, fire location. Yeah. Yeah, fired, they fired me the next day. And I was like, oh, my God. So, but anyway, so then um, I started doing, like, fill-in work uh, for a couple of years. And then I kind of left dentistry for a couple of years. And um, so then I came back. Incidentally, I went back to the office that that had fired me because there was I had to prove a point because I'm like, they they fired me for one reason, but not because... I wasn't an asset to the company, but because I was an asset, they fired me because they needed me to work during that time so they could make the money. So when I went back into the field, I went back to that location and um, and they hired me on the spot. And then matter of fact, they begged me to come back. And so I uh, worked for a little bit and then um, I was like, okay, I, I, I feel better because I, I knew that they didn't fire me because of me. They fired me because of some agenda. So then I left. <laughs> I left them. And then you I went. Guys, you guys are so high in demand, especially today, that it doesn't even make a difference. Um, oh, my beautiful oh. wife, uh, Rebecca. I was um, recording on a podcast. Would you like to come say hi? I've never introduced you before. This is Rebecca. Hello. She, she brings me my coffee. How at- are you? She's the best wife ever. 930. She brought me my coffee. I love her. Thank yeah, you. Hi, Bobby. You're back to there is this so Fanny awesome. Muslim. She's the number Thank one you. That's why professional in the country. <laughs> You're looking at the number one professional in the country. That's 50, wow. 50,000 professionals on the platform. And she has the most amount of bookings out of all of them. That's amazing. I heard really nice things about you. You guys and so much i just feel like it's hard for me to accept that i mean to hear that and believe it i'm like you're talking about me you're talking about somebody else oh um, thank oh, you guys no, if you take the credit you deserve it <laughs> <laughs> wow well rebecca you are so sweet you guys off today oh no so. <laughs> <We're never off. laughs> but, uh, thanks for saying oh, hi, of i'm hosting a dinner for our family tonight and i have three little ones to take care of so then oh like, wow Wow. Okay. Yeah. Then you are busy. I'm surprised you had enough time to bring coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I had to what? get myself oh. going with it too. Oh, anyway, it was really nice meeting you. Have a great okay. night. Thanks, Bye. Hey, Rebecca. All right. Yeah. She brought She's you a big show. I'm sorry. You were saying. Oh, um, I forgot what I was saying. You keep blowing me up when you keep saying number one. I, I know locally they said number one. So I, I don't know where the next report came from, so I'm like, oh my bad. Okay, so you're you're the number one professional in Georgia, in Atlanta, in Atlanta. Well, technically, Cloud is majority in Atlanta, uh, but yeah. Uh, thanks for the correction on that one. <laughs> you're still my number one, uh, any way you look at it. I mean, even then, it's still even it's still it's still surreal to even see for Atlanta because Atlanta is so big, and to see that it's just like wow. Wow, I love it. And so then, uh, oh, we were still talking about my history. Um, so then, uh, what did I do? I worked. Um, okay, so I worked there, and then I worked. Um, I did a couple more attempts, um, uh, jobs, and then because um, I was still trying to make my transition to Atlanta while my uh, last one was graduating. So then I accepted a position that allowed me to transfer from making Georgia up to Atlanta. And so I I worked there for about like uh, maybe about like maybe about eight, nine months. And I got fired. <laughs> I got what, fired. What, what was the reason behind it? So when I came in on that position, um there was a young lady that uh she By left me. This is before COVID, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, this is before COVID. Yeah, times are different now. If you told me you were fired today, I'd say there's something there's something wrong with the office for sure. But go yeah, on. It's, 
Oh, I, that's what I'll say. But so the, they, this hygienist, she left the company. I'm not sure what happened. I didn't get into the politics, but I filled in. And, you know, in my, in my production numbers, I was, you know, going up and up and up and up and up and up. So then I was going in for a review and I thought I was going in to be told that I rocked. And so instead I ended up getting fired at the, at the review. And I just said, and so and it was, it was some bogus reason. It was like, uh, someone, a patient, um, spouse had said that she didn't think I had put gloves on. <laughs> we treat everybody like they have AIDS. So why would I not wear gloves? And who said this? And when was this? And apparently it had been like about like four or five months before, but they picked the review to bring it up. So I couldn't refute it. And so I got fired that, that same day. But then the, the hygienist that had left, you know, the, I guess the decision I had was assume, assume while she was gone, she came right back the next day. So I'm like, well, all they had to do was tell me that their rock star hygienist came back and just could have just, you know, maybe, you know. Horrible. Yeah, That's but horrible. The, the gloves, you find me for gloves. So anyway, so then I I I you know I went to another location um after that and I worked there for about maybe about like four months. Um, but the the doctor he had like PTSD. <laughs> Was, oh, oh! I met really, him before. Holy smoke! I mean, he would get this close in my face and would just—he would yell and he would yell to anybody. And I'm like, "That's my way to live." I'm not sure he was Yikes. a major army. I don't know why he what he would be like to. I say, you know what? I can't do this. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not the one. And he loved when you would argue back with him. I mean, right. and he had that that feedback. And I, I'm not the one. I'm not a. I'm very passive. I'm not that type, you know. We, you should not get equipped. <laughs> and you, you were in the military too, right? I was that, in the military too. And is so, that where you got your training? Huh? Is that where you got your hy hygiene training? No, actually, in, in the in, in the military, I was uh, telecommunications. So all I did was telecommunications. I just went from one location to another location. I knew what was happening in the world before everybody knew. And so... Uh, once I got out, I was totally, you know, I was like, I need to do something else. I love the medical field. And so I. Let me ask you this. Sorry to cut you off there. Backing <laughs> up before the history. Uh -huh. Like you were in the military and something was it an epiphany or some thought process that came across that said to you, you need to become a hygienist. Yeah. So when, when I actually, when I got out of the military, I had, I was a, a mom at the time, a new mother. And an assignment came up for me to go overseas without my my baby, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, thank you. I this is why I draw the line. So, uh, so uh, I had opportunity to uh, take the money and exit the service, or go on the the um, the year without my baby. I'm like, ah, I can't do it. So I just take the money. I got out. So um, I went to school and I I was doing insurance coding at the hospital. And I did that for about a year, but I didn't really s interact with people. Only with the doctors, I would be like, you know, just verifying, you know, certain procedures, you know, why they were ordered, were they necessary, why were they duplicated, you know, just stuff like that. So I interacted with the the doctors, and you know, they can be the most cordial people. <laughs> the doctors. So anyway, I went, and I never saw the patient. I never saw, you know, how. I was able, you know, to get um, help and be involved in the claim process where we're charging, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, for a month's stay in a hospital. I never got to saw the, see the patient. So I was missing something, the dialogue. So I'm like, okay, I need to go back. I need to go back into the medical field. I, I wanted to do something. I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't want to have the full responsibility of the whole body. Uh, so, but I knew I wanted to be somewhere in the medical field. So then, then I came across um, hygienists. At the time, when I was in the military, it was more of a guide field. It was, for the men in the military, it was dominated by men. So I never saw myself as a hygienist. And so once I, you know, looked it up and the credentials and I saw how lucrative it was for my family, I decided to become a hygienist. And that's how it went. Amazing. Thank you.
<laughs> that you are awesome. I was like, wow. I know I'm supposed to say thank you and all that, but you, I still feel like I'm out. It's an out of body experience right here just to hear you say all those things. Wow, that's good. I'm glad you feel that way. I, um, I, uh, I said to myself when I first started this podcast that we need to we need to hear the voice of everybody out there. You know, traditional podcasts out there they go out and they they try to bring in people that are. Uh, in positions in dentistry that are, you know, on the higher ups, let's call it, right? C-level management, CEOs, co-founders. Um, but it, in my view, I think the, the workforce, you guys, you are the essential part of how dentistry is even functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, one can argue, oh, without the dentists having their DDS, we won't be able to be practicing dentistry. But I don't see it that way, especially today. You know, you had you had the great resignation. You have the quiet quitting period now. The numbers speak for itself. You're needed more than anything else out there. I'm not stating my opinion, more so a fact, just based on the numbers of there. You know, 8% of hygienists in the country decided after COVID that this isn't for them. An 8% shrinkage in supply of, of the workforce is in my viewpoint, catastrophic for what practices need to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. So without people like you, dentistry wouldn't even function on a day-to-day -day basis. You're so right. You're so right. I, I, I met someone um, several years ago and they, they said that, you know, the patients are not walking into the facility and say, hey, I need a root canal. They're not walking in, in there like that. Oftentimes they're in the chair and the hygienist, you know, show something like, hey, you might want to get that look that looks a little suspicious, not so stable. You might want to get that look that, you know, it's all about, you know, impacting the quality of your life, right? And so then they're more receptive to those treatments, but they're not just walking in the door, you know, into yeah. a, a restorative chair, you know, so. Benny, can I, can I share my screen and um, log in as a professional on my desktop and, and pick your brain. I'm really curious to know like how you maneuver on the platform. I know this is desktop, okay. the app, yeah. of course, it's a different feel and vibe, but yes, I'm dying to pick your brain about this. I don't normally go on screen share on, on, on our podcast and what have you, but let's do it. Yeah. I'm going to log in here. Okay. Uh, under a demo account. Okay. This is Cassandra, our hygienist. Okay. I'm curious. Um, the online events, have you participated in those? Yes, I know. I've done uh, several CEs. Um, I, actually, I need to do, uh, there's another one coming up. I probably need to look at that one. I think about something with pediatrics. And I'm like, eh, I may, may do that one or I may not. Not do that one. But the first thing I do, I always update my schedule so that it's um so that it's very active. That's right the here. Yeah, that's the first thing I do. No matter if I click in a thousand times a day, I'm hitting that button. <laughs> and then do you do you automatically accept bookings from favorite offices? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have uh I have uh uh one in particular, they they they're they're funny. They they book way out in the future, <laughs> so they 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 don't ever want to be without the. Um, I mean, they've offered me the position, but I'm like, I, I you know I don't want a position. So what they're doing, they say, okay, we will just book you as much as we want to. <laughs> right, and the the scheduling. Do you typically open up your entire day or just like a portion of the day? I have um um I have a seven to seven. Um, Monday through Friday, and um, on Saturday and Sunday, I have those. Um, I have those set to off, you know. But if like if, uh, if I, uh, office contact me personally, uh, and if they need someone, you know, and if I if I accommodate them, I will. But generally, I I have it off. I leave those off, and then I try to do a minimum of four hours. Um, you know, so when they book me, they know that at least four hours. So I have that set. How do you set the minimum on the platform? You um, go to the booking settings. Booking exceptions. Uh, 
no, you got to go to, um, go down to, it's about like maybe two thirds down of the ways for book, booking set. Not that one. You got to go over or see you on a computer, on a desktop. Um, I don't know how to get to your. No worries. I'm sure there's a way. I should know this inside out, to be honest. Um, uh, well, it's okay. It's all right. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can turn my screen a certain way. What uh, What else do you do you use in terms of functionality on the platform? So after you update your schedule, uh, tell us more. Okay, so after I update my schedule, um, I used to just to um, work with the algorithms, I suppose. Um, certain offices, um, um, if I wanted to make my profile appear in their search or whatever if there are certain offices that I wanted to work with then I would just click on their profile so that they would see my face come up and then um and that that would have them start searching my profile you know to see if oh, I'm interesting because they they see that you you check them out yes log in ah yes. interesting I know that was that was my secret back in the day. I would I would definitely I would do that. I would go and click just click on different and just keep on clicking. Especially if I see like uh, like now it has a feature that pops up with uh, different um, locations in the area, and so I'll you know oftentimes I click on them too. But now I don't have to do that. But that was when I first started. If I wanted to increase my likelihood of of being seen, I mean I knew if I updated my schedule, it allows me to be seen. But if I clicked on other profiles, it allowed me to be seen even more so. So that that was it. So I don't have to do that now, though, because now it's just, I'm, I'm always booked. But uh, uh, that's what I did to, to stay booked before. And then after it just it just caught on. And what else would I do? Um, I would also link my profile um, from, well, not link my profile, but link the um the um have them be a little bit more aware of cloud dentistry i would like hey you can check out my my digital calendar you know uh on cloud dentistry but i didn't have a link i tried to put the link but for whatever reason i can never get my link to work so i just tell them they can just search for my name on cloud dentistry and then that'll that'll uh uh, uh spark them to look into more about cloud dentistry a matter of fact, one of the offices that I work at so much before, that's how they found out about cloud dentistry because of what my profile said on that particular, on that platform. And since then, they just make sure they always book me. Um, let me wow. see. What do. Uh, that's interesting. So, yeah, because you could search by first name on the platform. So you just saw them search under Fanny, F-A-N-N-I-E. In mm -hmm. in yep, find me. I'll, I just say, hey, you can find me on cloud dentistry. Just find my name on cloud dentistry. And then that right. says, oh, I didn't know anything about cloud industry and blah, blah, blah. Is it really true? I'm like, yeah, just try it out. You know, like, and this is this is what you were referring to about like I'm logged in right now under a office profile. And, and these are the new professionals near me. Right. And so you can click right. on them. So Fanny, you pop up here all the time because you basically figured out a way to to use the system. Yep, you keep on clicking. <laughs> so that's what I do for this. Once I realized that that's what it said, it said to keep your up, you know, keep it uh, fresh. So I always update. That's the first thing I do is is I, I I do that. You know, make sure it's just up to date. You know, regardless. And um, so there are a lot of people that that I see them look at my my schedule, but I I don't really have any availabilities for when they need me. So you know, they don't get to, get to book me. But they look, and I see them come back and look and look and look. And I have to say, it was the same thing last week. Same thing. <laughs> just can't believe yep. and, <laughs> and you you don't come up right now because I'm assuming that Marietta is outside the radius that you selected you're willing to drive to. That's correct. That's correct. I only have a, I think, of 18 or 15-mile radius. Because Atlanta, okay. it could take you a whole hour just to do, you know, 20 miles. <laughs> so I try no, to make it easier on myself and not book so far out. You know, I try, I try to do closer to me. I think the, the, the underlying bottom line is that the, when you, when you look at business models out there and you see one model like cloud dentistry that provides so much 
liquidity, movement, freedom, independence, all those words apply, that it just, it, it puts all the power in the professional's hand and, and the offices too, of course, with, that, with completely disintermediating and eliminating the, the middleman that's out there. Mm-hmm. And it's created this, this movement that wasn't in dentistry before, but it was prevalent in all these other industries. You know, there was a shared gig economy app in every other industry out there. That's the reason why Trey decided to start this whole thing when he was sitting down with Reza that famous dinner night. Wow. Wow. I like you. Um, I, how many states um, is cloud dentistry in the United States? I'm going to ask you that. We are in, um, I believe, um, eight to, t- to 10 states right now. Okay, and is it, are you in locations also where the um, hygienists can um, have their own practices? Are you in those locations yes. too? Yes, uh, you're oh. referring to RDHAPs, for example, in California? Yeah, yeah, or even Colorado or wherever they can practice without a dentist being on board. Yeah, um, oh. there, there are, I think, most of those states that we're, we're in. Uh, what's your opinion about the... Um, the independence of hygienists, like, do you, do you feel as if hygienists should be allowed to be fully exempt and operate as independent contractors? Because, you know, in California, it was only up until like two years ago, I think, that they made general dentists to be allowed as an exempt IC and estheticians. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, wh- why not hygienists? Like, there's such a shortage of hygienists. Clearly, we can't reach the entire population. Right. Um, science will argue that everybody needs to see a hygienist because what goes on in your mouth is systemic to your entire body and how it yeah. reacts. Whether or not people have grasped that idea or not, that that's a different story. These are just <laughs> facts of studies out there, right? Mm-hmm. I, I speak for myself personally. I moved to New York from Los Angeles. I need to see a hygienist. I've never seen a hygienist before. My dentist did my cleanings in in Los Angeles. Oh. He loved doing it for some reason. Um, You know, he's a well-to-do guy. Uh, He's doing dentistry for fun. He sees the patients that he's known for many, many years sort of thing. But the majority of dentists that do their own cleanings, um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're sometimes penny-wise, pound-foolish. and they like. Go. $60 an hour? No way I'm paying that. Come on, doc. <laughs> give me a break here. You got to be producing $5,000 a day in restorative and implant. <laughs> You're worried about the extra $10 an hour? This is Thank the way you. it is nowadays. Thank you. Exactly. The, that, that's exactly right. That to me, that is... You, you're not, it's not nearly as profitable. When you look at an implant versus, a, like you say, a, a cleaning, that's that's a no-brainer again. <laughs> Why see some dentists try to take on that role and I, I just let them have it. I'm like, okay, go for it. <laughs> Here's another thing that I'm trying to figure out. Maybe you can help me figure this out, Fanny. Uh-huh. I asked a general dentist the, the other day. He's, he's in um, New Hampshire. Most, one of those beautiful towns I ever saw, picturesque. And he's got this $2 million fee-for-service practice. And he says to me, Money is not an object. I just want the right hygienist. I'm like, okay, what quality do you want in the hygienist? I want someone that can produce, he says to me. I'm like, what does that mean? They can't hmm. see more than one patient every hour max, 45 minutes if they're a superwoman, right? Okay. So right. What, what can you possibly produce more of? You're not able to diagnose. You can assess. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can talk to the patient about what you see in that regard, but... Is that what they mean by produce? Like referring more like Reperio and what have you? Because I, I, I can see there's a, there's a huge degree of philosophy, clinical philosophy between a, a wide ray, array of hygienists out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's part of it. And then they have like a lot of products they want you to push to the patient, whether or not they need them. You know, like a lot of rinse, uh, doc, um, dental rinses, different um, um instruments, I guess, for the patient to take home. Um, it's just it's just so much to overwhelm the, the patient with. And then they 
had the nerve to add that to your production. And if you don't meet a certain production, then they can. Right. I don't yeah, like they that. Say, they say, hey, we got the latest and greatest electronic toothbrush. Yeah. We want you to sell it. That's part of your production. And it's like all of a sudden, you know, you say to yourself, wait a second, I didn't go to hygiene school to be a salesperson here. I didn't sign up for that, but oh, it's part of production. Hmm. I feel you, Fanny. Like there's such a disconnect from the the hygiene world from the rest of the clinical world. It's astonishing to me. And I'm hoping that we're we're in an era now that the rest of the dental community just wakes up and things change. They could if they really appreciate uh, going back to what you said a few minutes ago, making that the oral connection, a uh, systemic connection. If they could really grasp grasp that, then then you know we could merge. But a lot of people don't don't they don't want to make that. I mean, they just don't. They don't believe. I guess I don't know if they don't believe or they don't want to believe. I'm not. I'm not sure because like a, I met a one person. He said a healthy mouth is a healthy body. You know, and, and health begins from the first pro, um, item you put in your mouth. That's where health begins. You Amen. know, so um, and so if they can understand that or, or appreciate that, then I think we we could, you know, work together as a team. But I have no idea why we're so the division is so so vast. And then within our own, you know, culture, we're uh, there's a division. So it's like. It is, it's, it's, it's extra. It is. And if it wasn't for, um, probably my love for the patients, I probably would have left the field, but I, I truly, truly love, love my patients. I love to take the time to, to really, uh, help them understand what's going on with that connection. Cause that's what we're talking about the whole time, the connection from what's going into the body through the body. And so by the time they leave, they're more empowered. They understand that it's more than just putting a toothbrush in your mouth, but you got to make sure you there, you got to get in there, you know, your tongue, don't forget your tongue and all that. So they, they truly understand that it's not just, uh, they're coming there to get a cleaning. I mean, they, they, they feel empowered when they leave and that's that. And I like to take the time to do that. And we'll, and I, and everything doesn't work for everybody. So some people might need an electric toothbrush, some need just the manual, some might need the rent, some need this, some need that. And so to try to have a one size fits all and push all these products on everybody and rah, 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 I, do, I can't get, I can't get down with it. I like to personalize um, treatment for, for individuals. That's what I like to do. Fannie Mae, thank you. Uh, Fannie Mosley. Sorry. And people always call me Fannie Mae. So I, I even though my middle name is Lee, but I let them have Fannie Mae because it sounds so oh. sweet. I let them have it. I, I, I don't think I want people to call me Fannie Lee now. I like when we talk Fannie Mae. It's not even a um, Lee in there. I mean, a May in there, but I like it. No, no, well, I appreciate you. Fannie, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time today and joining us. We, um, I learned a lot from you. And um, oh. thank you for that. I wish you guys were more close. Oh my goodness gracious alive. Holy smoke of worry. Virtual hug. <laughs> oh, back at you. Back at you, Darius. Well, I hope you guys have fun at your dinner party. I know you will. I know you will. Thank you. Uh, which dinner party? I bet you your, your uh, wife said y'all were doing a dinner, par a dinner oh, party. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, the one she's doing tomorrow night. Um, oh, tomorrow night. Oh, okay, okay. Well, actually, no, it's tonight. My fault. Oh, <laughs> but um yeah don't tell her i made that mistake she'll, she'll <laughs> um, between us well, Vic, edit that part out please thank you That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was a well, pleasure having you on the on the show thank you so much likewise thanks for having me thanks for asking questions i mean it it, it just really because you know sometimes you'll be independent so much that you don't really get a chance to make that connection with the office team you know, and so it's like when you go home, it's like, you know, you know, if you're at a different office, you know, you don't get to tell, you know, the previous office what you did the week the weekend before because you had a different office. So it's like, you know, so sometimes you can be a little independent and a little, you know, uh, um, I don't want to say lonely. You're not lonely, but you just don't really have that. That's about the only thing I probably miss that connection with, you know, seeing how my my fellow team, you know, 
uh, did for the weekend or whatever their plans or whatever. But hey, it's not enough for me to go back into the field. I, t- I mean, go back to the office. I'll tell you that much. Not enough. Hey, life is about relating to everybody. Yes, exactly. And you and you do it so well, effortlessly. You, Trey, everybody, y'all, y'all, you guys have a gift, a tremendous gift. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you enjoy the rest of your. There was other people out here. Oh no. Okay, I thought I saw some numbers drop. I'm like, there were other people on this call. <laughs> no, it's just us two. Okay. Okay. Good. I love the introduction. I can't wait to go and look at it. I'm. I'm. Oh, matter of fact, where do you say I can find it? At? The the uh, podcast. What what what? Um, YouTube. Where can it's I find available it? on YouTube? Uh, and soon it'll be available on uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all the major ones. Uh, I'm t- your 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 it's on pair dental um YouTube. Yes, I can send you the link. Okay, there you go. All right, because you said you have at least thirty five um recordings. You know. We haven't released all of them. We just we just um oh, um let me uh just whenever this. you can. just whenever. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. Okay, I see a little little red thing here. Okay, I got it. Okay, bye. Can Shadow say bye? Well, I need to drop Shadow. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Perfect. Bye.